in a world where Microsoft virtualization is still considered to be the underdog by some. The Hyper-V Amigos enlighten the IT crowds on how they could very well be mistaken. Hi, Didier. Happy New Hello, Year. Gosh. Happy New Happy. Year, my friend. <laughs> we already did that one. No, we didn't. The last yes, episode was... Really? I think yes. the last epi episode was... Um, Two or three days before Sylvester, or? No. No? Did we won this year? Okay. Did, cool. Or did we, did we throw one away? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we have always problems with the setup. And uh, I, we had to prepare this show maybe for another hour to get the setup right. And we hope it will work through the show. But, Didier, yes, today... My what... outsourced plan is back, backfiring. <laughs> okay. Uh, Didier, what, what do we, we want to show today? Well, if we look at the screen, you can see I've got a little script set up. And if you look at the header real good, we're going to try and demo something really cool in uh, Windows Server vNext. And that's a uh, storage uh, replication. Yes. And uh, I've already made a video and put it on Vimeo about, uh, you know, the, the, the ordinary server-to-server -server storage replication. So for this one, I suggest we'll do uh, the stretch cluster uh, scenario. Yeah. yeah, and I have to congratulate you to your new uh, new uh, title. You are MPV now, right? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. not a problem. Hey. Oh, look at that! <laughs> look at that! Look at that! Oh, hey, look! Uh, hey, so this 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 is called DevOps, people. We <laughs> are real time correcting mistakes in the code. Yeah, this is also a first. We, uh, you have a lot of PowerShell. Uh, you have a nice script there, and uh, you want to show um, storage replica in a cluster, right? In yeah, a stretch so cluster. Well, there are, there are multiples. There are more scenarios coming. If you look at the online documentation that's out there, mm -hmm. there are more scenarios coming. I think they mentioned it in TechEd that they are still working. It's still very rough around the edges. All kinds of stuff is still uh, a little bit broken, especially the remoting with PowerShell and stuff. Mm -hmm. but, and they, but they're working very hard on it, and I'm expecting that we'll have uh, a whole bunch of new features and capabilities being lit up in the next code drop. Mm -hmm. But until that happens, we are still on technical preview V1, as we refer yeah. to it. So bear with us. Uh, it's been a while, and I've noticed that sometimes it's a bit uh, yeah. you know, finicky. Yeah, so. this build is four months old. It's an October build, I guess. Uh, this is the only stuff we have. And uh, But before you show this, maybe we should talk a little bit about storage replication. You did a video. Um, it's a new feature in uh, VNext uh, that will be out in sometime in 2016 because the server yeah. is delayed to 2016. Uh, I did a video with NetPile. He is a, a program manager for Storage Replica. And uh, please, Didier, there are three scenarios in the moment where you can do a Storage Replica. Which are the three? Oh, there are three? Oh, okay. <laughs> this, there is the uh, server-to-server -server storage replica. Yeah. And, uh, perhaps I'll try to bring up the link so that you can see uh, where the video is at about yeah. this one. Uh, let's me try Vimeo. Working hard in IT. Just Googling myself here. So that's the easiest way for me to find my video Vimeo yeah. page. I will put uh, it in the show notes uh, of the yeah. Hyper-V Amigo show. Yep. So it's opening up. Yeah, here it is. I'm bringing it to the camera right now, I hope. So if you storage replica in Windows Server te te Technical Preview. So that's a little video you can uh, have a look at. Uh, and I demonstrate basically how I replicate a volume from one server to another. And then I go to uh, failure scenarios. Okay. Not all of them, but it just demonstrates the capability how to get your replicated data up and running into production if you need mm. to. Yeah, but what I mean was uh, there will be three scenarios. There will be server to server. There yes, will be that's the, that's the one in the video, by the yeah, way. Yeah, there will be a stretch cluster you are showing today, or this we hope we can cluster. show. Yeah, and there yeah, will yeah. be also cluster to cluster. But uh, that isn't that isn't uh, lit up yet in the in the current. Yeah, code it's though. it's not in the code, but they said there will be the scenario cluster to cluster. 
Yes, yes. And we yes. can't show it in the moment. Yeah. No, we can't. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so storage replica f um, is a feature that is present in many enterprise storage systems. And uh, oh, absolutely. I assume you have storage replica in in your nice Zahn uh, storage systems. Yes. Yes, I do. And uh, I I found it. It's I find the ones I'm using right now to be one of the better ones I've ever used. It has a very nice GUI. It has a very nice oversight. Mm -hmm. uh, it picks up any any changes on your VM. So you it's because it's block uh, level uh, replication. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a difference, for example, with uh, Hyper-V uh, replica. Mm -hmm. The Hyper-V replica, if you make changes to your source, it's not automatically picked up or removed from your target. So you need to take that into consideration. Uh, with with block level replica, also the, the Windows one that's coming, uh, that's a concern you don't have because whatever is on that volume is being replicated. Yeah. It couldn't care less what, what's on there actually. Yeah, but to clarify, when you mean uh, if you change something in Hyper-V replica, if you change the data that is re uh, in the virtual machine, it's, it is of course replicated to another side. Of course, yes, but if yes. you change the settings, like you add another virtual disk to the to the high, to the virtual machine that is replicated, this is not done yet. It will be hopefully in the next release. Yeah, but it's uh, you mean that with uh, with changes yeah, again. Yeah. Okay, but the replic the rep the hyper -V replica is rock solid. So if you have a VM, it is replicated every five minutes or thirty seconds or fifteen minutes. Yeah, it's configurable. Yeah, and one of the beautiful uh, capabilities of hyper -V replica is the IP readdressing if you need it. Yeah. So, but this is a completely other beast. It's based on uh, on a volume or a partition, um, and you replicate every change that is done to the volume to another site or to another volume yeah basically yeah okay so you uh, clarify something in the script stretch cluster okay I'm, 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 this is the title for my previous script so I need to you know okay so uh, you have there an asynchronous scenario and a synchronous scenario uh, before you delete it there at <laughs> was was there yeah. so yeah. maybe we clarify that there um, the high, the the storage replication has has a synchronous replication and an asynchronous yes. replication uh, synchronous means every change that is done to the volume is replicated to the other side it has to be acknowledged it the acknowledge came back and then the the, the system can write another change or so to that's the that's correct and that and 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 that's done in in the log volume so yeah. basically that's why they tell you that your log volumes need to be ssds the, yeah. the best and the fastest possible uh, storage you can afford because otherwise you're going to introduce latency and latency is per definition an issue in synchronous replication yeah Right? You need to keep it as low as possible. So it would be very sad that you invest money in 10 gigabit pipes with less than 3 milliseconds or whatever yeah. uh, re return latency times in, yeah. on your network and then ruin your, your setup by having uh, 7,200 uh, SATA disk in there. Yeah. Right? You don't want to do that. Yeah, to clarify that, it, it has an impact on performance. So if you're, you replicate to another data center, for example, I assume you are doing that. You have more than one data center and you replicate over a fast uh, network connection to another data center. Well, actu and actually, actually, what we're doing is we're doing replication within the site okay. and then we replicate off-site. And the replica off-site is actually asynchronous. Okay, but assume you have two data centers, there are maybe 30 kilometers uh, apart from each other and there is a latency because you have the speed of light, you have electronic going on and uh, you will write something and it uh, has the log has to be transported to the other side, uh, it has to be written there and then the information come back, it's written. So and if there is a latency of maybe three milliseconds, your storage system slows down because every write takes at least uh, about three milliseconds um, unless you can continue with the next thing, yeah, right? So this is the latency yeah, yeah. You, you mean, okay. Yeah, and latency is, is critical because otherwise, uh, as, as you might realize, uh, your, your, your applications are not very happy if they have to wait too long yeah. uh, for a write to be uh, committed, right? 
it's, yeah. uh, that's it's just the nature of the of the business. Yeah. But there is another thing in uh, in storage replica. This is the asynchronous replication. It's it works the same as the synchronous replication. So data is written to a log file. It's replicated to the other side to a log file, then written to the real disks. But the ACK is not uh, coming from the other side. The ACK is yes. coming when the data is in the log file. You get a, a, at once the ACK. So, yeah. it's so it's very fast. Yeah. So the, the replica is delayed a little bit, basically. Yeah. That's the, and how much it is delayed depends on the workload and the, and the bandwidth you have. Yeah. Of course, you, you never want it to be in a situation where you where your lag is becoming bigger and bigger, and actually you never complete all the all the I/O on the other side. So. Yeah. Uh, whilst planning for replication, you have to take a lot of things into consideration because, as you might know, networks don't always stay up. Sometimes they go down. Yeah. For, uh, sometimes I, they go down. I've heard of for, that. Yeah. Yes, it's it's sometimes it's for a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, whatever the reason, it can be a couple of hours or, heaven forbid, days. Yeah. And then you need to make sure that your log files are big enough to make sure that they can deal with with okay. with all the the backlog. Uh, but it, but you also need to make sure that when they come back on, that your bandwidth uh, capability is good enough to stand the chance to ever to to catch up again. Okay. Because if the delta has become too big and you have a very small pipe and you can't actually never recuperate from that scenario, you'll never catch up. Yeah. No. But yeah. Uh, imagine you have uh, two data centers. You have a very big data pipe, maybe 10 or 40 gigabits to the other side, but the latency is maybe 10 milliseconds. So you That's bad. could you could use asynchronous replication. There is enough uh, bandwidth there to replicate the data that is changed, but you have yeah. this delay. And so if you switch to asynchronous replication, maybe all your data is replicated, but you don't have the drawback of the latency. Yes, but you have uh, another drawback. Which one? The drawback is that uh, with synchronous replication, your, 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 your applications know, hey, my data is committed. So it's an application consistent uh, yeah. state of the data. With asynchronous, you don't have that. Yeah. And that's, that's the same issue you have on a SAN. But on a SAN, what you can do to work around that, and that's what we do, is we create regular snapshots on the SAN okay. with a hardware VSS provider. And those snapshots are also replicated. Okay. Meaning that you might you, you do not have uh, let's say zero second uh, data loss. Your recovery uh, point objective is different, yeah. but you do have if you if you have issues with application inconsistent data, you do have the option to go back to one of your snapshots, and those are application consistent. Okay. So even with asynchronous, you can work around that. And if I understood correctly from what Nat Pyre was telling in his tech, tech head presentation, they're, they, they're thinking about lighting that up in, uh, in vNext okay. so that you can uh, leverage that as well. So, okay. yeah. so um, some other thing uh, to talk about, uh, this is coming in vNext, this feature, and uh, till now it's only in enterprise storage systems. So you you can do uh, not only ZAN volumes, replicate them to another site, but you, uh, you are free uh, what you can replicate. So you can yes. replicate a disk or a volume on a disk. You can replicate a volume on a ZAN. You can uh, do it with uh, storage spaces. So it, does, it doesn't really matter what, what volume you replicate. Correct. That, that's the beauty of it. Even yeah. the local storage in a server, you can replicate it now via Windows to another server. Yeah. So like, this, as long as. Yeah, this is a very cool feature. So maybe we have a look on it. You have prepared oh, yes. a nice demo. Yeah, so... yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to take a while, so we can chat while some of the code is running. So basically, okay. what I do is I clear the, the logs of all the servers to make sure that we have some clean logs to look at if we want to. Okay. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to install the features we need. So we're going to install a remote desktop so we can look at the machines, file and printer sharing. We're going to do remote management, uh, WMI. We're also going to install uh, Hyper-V because actually I wanted to demonstrate this on, on hardware mm -hmm. and then see that my Hyper-V machine is running uh, on, the other, on the other cluster in the other data center. But okay. unfortunately, of course, I didn't have the hardware, so I had to do it virtual and we don't have nested virtualization. So basically, this is a bit redundant. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then what I also install, of course, are uh, file services. Uh, uh, yeah, this is nice. 
WVR stands for Windows Volume Replication, yeah. which was the original name they were using in development, but it has become storage replication. Yeah. But of course, the original name remains, so that's the WVR. Uh, we do some uh, failover clustering because it's a virtual cluster, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, mul Multipart IO and et cetera, et cetera. So let's, let's just kick this off. Yeah. Uh, then we know that this, uh, this we don't need to do. Let's kick this off. If this doesn't work, we might as well go home because then it's going wrong <laughs> from... <laughs> oh, oh, I forgot I am home. Okay. <laughs> okay, you are oh. home. And uh, uh, you oh, look, shouldn't I, have say that. It's a sim uh, session. Yeah. Oh, it's the firewall. Oh, we don't need that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Who needs a firewall? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, Didier, when, when we look at this, and you, you mentioned the firewall, I'm amazed how many companies, enterprise companies, uh, um, turn off the firewall and I always say this is why you are you doing that and uh, this is a habit maybe from the good old 2003 days right yes and no I think it's it, it also has something to do with the fact that uh, bar group policies the Windows firewall on the servers lack central management mm -hmm. and I think that if they could make if they could deal with that uh, some people might be more prone to leave it uh, up and running. Actually, we leave it up and running. Yeah. And, and we have our organizational units predefined with all the settings. So the moment we drop, drop a server, depending on its role in the right OU, it will get the right firewall settings. Yeah. And, and we still allow uh, customizations for special workloads so that people, if they really need to enable or create a new rule themselves, they can. But it's all very dependent on your environment, whether people will allow that or not. Yeah. So for us, we, we can manage to leave it on. I, 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 can, I can appreciate that some people will say, look, uh, we can't have this. We, we're going to turn it off. But then I hope they have something else in place. Yeah. And I even saw some weird problems if you turn off the firewall or even disable the service uh, with WinRM. So with remoting, mm, I don't know if it's uh, so nice to turn off the firewall. But back to uh, your yeah, script, yeah. what is happening there? Uh, if basically we're installing all the features we need, and then it's uh, then it's going to uh, reboot the servers. Okay. So if we look if we look here, yeah. I've got four virtual machines prepared. Yeah. Node one and node two are in the primary data center. Okay. And then there's node three and node uh, four, and those are in the disaster recovery center. Okay. So after we have the, the, the roles installed, we are going to, uh, I'm going to scroll down the script a bit. What we're going to do is we're going to set up uh, a cluster, mm -hmm. and we're going to have uh, a, sh a file share witness, right? We're going to test mm -hmm. cluster is something we're not going to do. It takes way too long. But basically, this is the PowerShell command to see if something is clusterable. Uh, but it, it takes too long. I'm going to yeah. comment this out. Uh, then we're going to create a new cluster. We're going to yeah. call it stretch cluster. We're going to put the nodes in there. We're going to give it an IP address. We're going to set the, the quorum to, the, the, to use the file share witness. Right? And then we're going to start creating some uh, disks yeah. while I explain it or what we're doing. Those disks are going to be added to the uh, virtual machines we've uh, shown you here, right? Mm -hmm. And what's important about that, we are actually adding them as shared VHDXs. Okay. So there's, there's this command, this option here, right? And you can say support persistent reservation. Basically, this is the same as use share virtual disk. This is telling uh, the Hyper-V, the, the VM, hey, this is a shared virtual disk. Okay. And actually... This is the documented uh, name, and this is an alias. Okay, cool. So basically, this is the same. So I'm doing a bunch of them uh, with with the the one uh, method and the other one with the with the other keyword. No. Now, what we're doing is we're creating uh, a log disk and a data disk, and we are presenting th that one to both nodes in the primary data center. And then okay. we will create. Okay. We also create. We also create a log disk and a data disk, and those we will present to node 3 and 4 in the disaster recovery uh, center. So basically, this storage is asymmetrical. 
mm-hmm. right? So the two the two uh, nodes in the primary data center will see their log disk and their data disk, mm-hmm. and the two nodes in the uh, disaster recovery center they will o- only see their own uh, log disk mm-hmm. and their own data disk, mm-hmm. and it's between and those disks uh, are going to be be replicated. Right, mm-hmm. so we're going to replicate the data disk to the disaster recovery center, and basically this is what the script is doing. Because I've, I've I I repeat this exercise a lot for testing. So what it basically does is it it will format the disk, it will name them, it will yeah. it will set up the entire cluster ready to do actually what we're interested in, the uh, stretch cluster storage replication. And the reason I I, uh, I could have started it up before, but I wanted to show you that that automation is a very handy thing to have if you don't make too many scripting mistakes. That is, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it saves a lot of time. And uh, I'm also planning to do perhaps uh, a session and a workshop on this. And I, I'm I'm also working on publishing the scripts. Hmm. So just they're, they're not the world's most uh, perfect scripts but they will be will help out a lot of people to start going with this yeah. so that's that's the idea did i have a so question that, for you how many time yeah. do you do powershell now if you say from your work time uh, how many time you are in powershell uh, all, every day no how many Sometimes. how many percentage of your of your whole work time Ooh, i find that hard to say uh I'd say 10, 10 to 15 percent. Uh, I'm 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 well over 70 to 80 percent. Okay. I'm yeah. uh, I ESA is my uh, the ISE is my new friend. I even yeah. installed an addition to ISE, so I'm doing a lot of uh, PowerShelling and debugging, and I'm back if, to developer if, now. Yeah. <laughs> if if I dive into PowerShell for a couple of days because yeah. I'm working on something, I, I tend to use uh, I sometimes I use a third-party product uh, that's really nice, but. Yeah. Yeah, right. the, I, the ISE is really great because you have it everywhere. Yeah, that's a good thing. That, if you if you use something else, you have to install it all the time. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's one of the drawbacks. Yeah. So, so how so far is your this. setup? You have. Let's see. Well, it it's. Uh, so you uh, you you are, you don't get afraid about the uh, the lot of errors you have here. Well, I think it's 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 all due to the firewall. Uh, okay. If the firewall isn't installed, it can't get to the. Uh, to do the can't do the remoting, so okay. probably there, that's where something went wrong. Uh, otherwise, we'll fix that manually. I don't know why it didn't do the firewall thingy. Let's have a look. Oh, I think I already know what happened. Okay. Uh, did I? That was me just being silly. I've been messing around too much in this script. Okay. Never mind. Let's let's see if we can uh, if we can get it to work. Now we should be connected to a couple of them, right? Let's see if we can. We'll we'll already kick off the script to make sure that we have. Uh, let's see what does this. This is testing if the servers are back online. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if they don't answer for the ping, well. <laughs> Lack of resources. Oh my God! Am, am I am I running out of memory, or is it just a firewall that won't allow me to okay. to get an answer? Yeah, this so is... if you want to if you want to sponsor my lab for more memory, feel free. <laughs> okay. Let's let's create a share. Okay, the share should be there. So let's just have a look if we can get there. Yeah. To explain this, you are working with uh, the next. Yep. Uh, the technical preview, the the very early b- uh, bits, and uh, of course there is a lot of things not working as you expected. So uh, yeah, but this I think the things that are not working now is my mistake. I will okay. point out things that are not lit up yet. This is uh, a remainder from uh, previous experiments, as you can see. I'll just clean this up. But the share is there. We need that one. Okay. So we're gonna create. We're not gonna do the test cluster. It takes too long. We're just gonna create a new cluster now. Okay. 
And let's see if that works. If that doesn't work, uh, we might go back to the PowerPoint slides. <laughs> <laughs> if, if that doesn't work, we will do another show. Yeah. So it should be creating a cluster, which is always nice. Uh, it might fail, of course, if it didn't reboot the servers. Let's have a look. Yeah. This is not... Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, no, I don't see clustering installed. So Let's this use... might... Okay, it will fail. It will fail, I'm afraid. Uh, let's have a look on the other one. Because, yeah, normally it, it requires a reboot. Why did this go wrong? Your firewall? Yeah, yeah, I know. But why did the installation of the firewall go wrong? Uh, okay, let's see. Let's have a look. What do we have installed? Probably nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no Hyper-V. Failover uh, clustering. Uh, pending, pending restart. Yeah. So let's let's just just let's just uh, give them a little reboot. No, oh, let's let's do it. Otherwise, we'll, we'll go to clustering. We just need to reboot all four of them anyway. So shut them down. There we go. That's the beauty of virtualization. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's shutting down normally. That's one of the annoying things I find sometimes. Uh, about uh, shutting down a VM is that you don't always see the entire process. You just see the start screen, the logon screen, and it remains there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so they're all down, and now we'll bring them all up. Start. That should have taken care of this poor little script. It's still trying. The brave little soul. Look at that. <laughs> what a what, what a trooper. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna stop it so these are back up and running we need to log on to them because some of the commands we need to do for the stretch clustering we need to do on the on the VM because the remoting doesn't work in the technical preview that of course will be fixed uh, Okay, perhaps we should try with numlock on. That always does it if you need. Yep. There we go. Oh no. This is something I really, really, really find very annoying. I've had this a lot lately. Okay. With uh, the technical preview for some reason. Yeah. yeah, and there we go. Yeah, yeah. there we go. No domain controller? Uh, uh, no, no, we have a domain controller. Uh, it's just that the trust relationship got bro gets broken. Really? Yeah. And I don't know if it's particularly related to the technical preview. But you see, this one is fine. Uh, Sorry. Uh, how, about, how about this one? That might have been the reason why the script didn't run either. Of course, yeah. If you don't have a trust relationship that's working, that's pretty annoying. It needs to be a member of a domain to join a cluster, if you might recall. Yeah. Yes, still. Yes, still. Uh, <laughs> still, yes, still. Uh, so let's see if this one has the same issue. Uh, it's it's easily fixed now, actually, in PowerShell. You don't need to unjoin it from the domain. You can just reset the machine password. So that's that's the good news. Oh, it's only one. Look at that. Hey. <laughs> so we have a li at least a little bit of luck. <laughs> it's only one. Okay. So what we, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll 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 do a little. Uh, what was it again? Reset.
so uh, there we go. PowerShell. Uh, we can run it anywhere. We, we should run it here, actually. We can do that. Let's log in locally. Hey, look, this is live troubleshooting. Yay. Yes, it is. Isn't <laughs> that cool? Okay, now I still need to remind, remember my password, of course. Very important. <laughs> with, with passwords. Uh, so you reset the um, local password? Uh, what you do is reset the, 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 the password that you have uh, between the, uh, between the, in the computer account with the domain. Okay. So it's, it's, if I recall correctly, uh, I should start this as an administrator. Let's do it in IRZ. Perhaps it's a li little bit better to read on the screen. I don't know. So it was reset computer. Do I see it already? No, you're still loading the yeah. command I'm, window. Yes, I, so again, if you want to sponsor SSDs and, and, and power <laughs> and all kind of that sort of a nice machine password, I need to get my credentials for that. And then I need to say what, I, I can specify what server to use. So what I'm okay. going to do is, uh, that's the domain controller yeah. we're going to use. So Spartan is a domain controller of me. Uh, let's run this. Mm, grid credential. Did I get credential? Oh yeah, let's see. Uh, will this work? Yes. My extremely important password. Whilst this is running, I'm going to have a quick peek here because possibly this one doesn't have anything installed because I couldn't because the trust relationship was gone. So what I'll do here is very quickly uh, throw it on here because otherwise we still have an issue, right? Yeah. So there we go. Uh, we, we're not going to do the uh, the Hyper-V part anyway because it's a virtual setup. It's not physical. That will not do us any good anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't really need that one. So next. Yes, of course. I, oh, you, I did select clustering, did I? Or did I just look at it? You looked at it. I looked at it. That's not good enough. You need to do something, actually. <laughs> yes. And we as, as uh, MPIO. I always throw in MPIO normally because, well, it's uh, it's a cluster. In real life, you will want that. I always tend to throw in Telnet client to do testing, but for this, this, uh, this should all, this should all just work now. Let's see. Okay. There we go. Is this finished yet? Yes, it is. It seems so, yeah. So, yep. So this shouldn't take too long. And then we're normally good to go after the reboot of this machine. Meanwhile, yeah. let's have a look at this script. Uh, did I kick off the creation of the disks yet? Otherwise, oh, no, you so didn't. We're, we're going to do this because this takes time as well. So. It can create disks whilst we're waiting for uh, the VM here. Of course, now my VM is competing with uh, with the the creation of the VHDXs for for IOPS. <laughs> so that's the drawback of running it at the same time <laughs> in the lab. Yeah, without SSDs. Uh, actually, there are two SSDs in my iSCSI target. Okay. Yeah, two Intel SSDs. I could use a couple of bigger ones, but... Yeah, 
Always. That's always our problem. Uh, we have to deal with real hardware, and there is a cost to real hardware, right? Yes, and this is this is actually the home lab, so this is a, a low budget operation. <laughs> so, you're creating the disks. I'm creating the disks on the background, as we you can see. We will create the cluster when uh, when the one yeah. machine is finished. Yeah, we just need to reboot this one once everything is installed. But this takes a while to create them. Mm -hmm. And what, when the machines are created and we've successfully created a cluster, we will run the, the scripts to to uh, format them, give them a name, so we can easily log into the VM and see what's happening. Okay. Yeah, it's all a bit. It's a bit tedious to set up. Uh, uh, because it's uh, asynchronous, so you need to make sure that the, that the disks are on the right node, so you can see two of them and two of the other ones not. It's all there's all kinds of logic in there to make sure that you get the right disk. Uh -huh. uh, so that's a bit of a tedious exercise. Okay. And all all this one, and uh, this is just checking uh, what disk is it, how large is it, is it a physical disk, is it online, yes or no, and with all that logic, it it knows what to do with uh, with uh, with the disks. So. so let's see our, our boy here. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but yeah, that's me creating disks. I said, uh, uh, I, I need a, I need a, I need a flash only sun at home. Of course, of course you you need that. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs that. Yeah, but do you uh, think of the power uh, power costs for well, flash I'm, only? I'm... My my house is 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 not that far from the railway, so I was thinking like perhaps I could run a cable to the, <laughs> to the railway. Or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. You are in uh, Belgium. There is no uh, penalty on that. Uh, the, probably there is. Probably. <laughs> there is. But but I'm like, would they even notice? <laughs> 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 so you need a transformator, or how it's called, to, to transform the uh, the voltage down to your equipment. Oh, Otherwise, really? yeah. it, it will I was blow just up. Going to use, I was just going to use a couple of crocodile clamps. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> yes. So you're t you're telling me this is not that easy, or something? No, it's is not that, it? that easy. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's already shutting down. I'm just impatient. Oh, we, we, whilst we're waiting, of course, I'll, yeah. I will show something. Look, it's creating disks. Yeah, and you are creating oh. shared VHD disks. Yeah, yeah, look. So, so this is the uh, the data disk for the primary data center. This is the, the log disk for the primary data center, and now it's creating the 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 data disk and the log disk for the uh, re, re, the disaster recovery mm -hmm. data center. Mm -hmm. The okay, maybe you explain uh, the shared VHDXs. Uh, you need them because you have your cluster. You have two nodes that are that run from the same disk, and for yeah. that you need iSCSI or fiber channel or SMB or, storage. And yes. now you can use shared VHDXs in a demo environment. Uh, you can use shared VHDXs in a production environment. Yeah, of course you can. But uh, uh, you, you choose this here because of the of the demo environment, I guess, or? Yes, and it's easy. It's easy. Otherwise, I would have to do iSCSI into yeah. the guest, yeah. and that's yet another complexity because you have to configure that. And scripting iSCSI uh, with uh, with the uh, the old-fashioned cl uh, claim, uh, .exe, what is it called again? Help me uh, exactly. I, I, think I, forgot there, I think there is PowerShell for that, or? I'm not too sure about that one, actually. Okay, I can look. So, let's look. Uh, no, this is the wrong one. I need to share it. So, the shared storage is there. So, basically, if I can get my, uh, if my machine here is back up and running, I could try to create a cluster. What about it? Let's try and let's create a cluster. Let's try to do that. You never know. It might just work. So in 2012 R2 there is uh, there is PowerShell for iSCSI initiator. Okay. So that's nice, and it's that's nice. two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen commandlets. So you should be fine. But oh, it's it's still there. 
Oh, my old one is still there, so that's that's okay. We'll just uh... your old cluster. Yes. Maybe you rename the cluster. Ah, then your script will have some other problems, I guess. Yeah, but hang on, we'll uh... we'll just go into my domain controller and mm -hmm. throw out the uh, the cluster object. Why not? Uh, stretch cluster. Look at that. There is still one here. So I'm gonna just delete it to delete. be on the safe side. Yeah. Now I actually to be on the safe side. Now I need to make sure that we have replication done. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. This is quite educating because this it's is very a, <laughs> this, this is the setup. Is <laughs> where you deal with problems, and that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only the only drawback of that is that it takes time. But as you see, it seems to be building a cluster now. Yeah, it is. So that's good. And then you add a, a, a file share witness because in a stretched cluster scenario, there is no disk witness supported, and you need a file share witness, right? Yeah, and now it's nagging again. So you used your domain controller for the file share witness, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. A, yeah, I know. I know. This is no, the... no. It's a demo setup, but uh... <laughs> so let's let's have a look uh, if we're okay here. So we'll just pop on one of the nodes in uh, the primary data center. We'll open failover cluster manager. And I expect to see a cluster that is not finished, of course, because basically it doesn't have any storage yet. Right? We haven't added disks. Yeah. But we should at least see that we have two nodes in this cluster, or four nodes in this cluster. And that seems to have gone well. Yeah. Right? So the nodes are there. That's 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 good. So we've already created the disks. You so what we're now going quorum? to do is we're going to add the disks. Okay. We've you set don't... the quorum. Now we're going to add the disks to the to the VMs. Okay. Because that hasn't happened yet. So basically that's what this commands these commands do. Oh you already added uh, the quorum. I didn't saw that. Yeah, I, I did it, yeah. Okay. So the movie, if you play it back, will prove that I did it. Okay. <laughs> but you can also so... click on the stretch cluster and show us. Yes, I can. Uh, let me first open computer yeah. management so that I can show you that the, the, uh, the storage is indeed being added uh, in a shared way to the to the cluster. Right. So normally, uh, let's have a look. Okay, look at it. You you see that the three yeah. gigabytes is the log disk, the four, and if all th these are actually. This is the primary data center, so these are the disks for those two nodes, and normally if we go to one of the nodes, uh, let's take this one, node 3, which is in the disaster recovery center, we should also see two disks, data and log, and those are the two separate disks, because it's uh, it's not uh, synchronous uh, storage here, or it's symmetric storage, sorry. So, okay, they, yeah. they have them as well. Okay. okay, and if you look now in, in the cluster, uh, you should see that if we, well, we're not going to do this yet, we're going to wait a bit, but uh, we should see that, uh, not yet. Oh yeah, I, I need to run the script, they need to be formatted with mm. NTFS, they're still not available. Uh, what did you want to see again? Uh, if the quorum is added, so yeah, there oh, it is. Yeah. Uh, File yeah. share witness it's button, yeah. okay. It's, it's there, so that's good. So back to the script. Yeah. Uh, so this is configuring the VM storage. So we're now going to try and label, uh, format, uh, do all kinds of uh, funky stuff to make sure things are okay. I'm just going to close this region and let's just, uh, what is this? Ah, yes, well, once that is done, we will make sure that we find out whether we have the correct disk and what we need to do with it in regards to the to the stretch cluster. Mm -hmm. So let's just 
close this as well. And then we have the region where we create a vSwitch. Basically, we don't really need that because we're not going to be running uh, uh, a guest. Because we don't have nested virtualization, we won't be able to do anything with it anyway. Mm -hmm. So let's just kick this off and hope this goes well. That should be quite funky to uh, to follow. We should be able to see some stuff happening. So you see, it's formatted a disk. It was raw, so they're they're being prepped. They'll be added to the cluster. Uh, all that is taken care of you, and basically, if you set it up right from the beginning, you can have your demo environment up and running quite quickly that way. So, look, that's what it's doing. The okay. data disk is there. Uh, it should do exactly the same with our nodes in the disaster recovery center, right? So, sometimes you see this happen very nicely, sometimes you don't. Uh, it's a GUI hiccup, or it's due to the fact that it's still technical preview. But you see, things are happening, right? Mm -hmm. So then at least we have finally built our cluster uh, to, to set up that stretch replication. Yeah. Uh, so that's the good news. We're making progress here. Yeah, we do. And it's all uh, very realistic. So we're, we're having issues. <laughs> <laughs> and there are another red light in PowerShell. Yeah. yeah. Add cluster shed volume. Yeah, we will have a look at the cluster itself to make sure. Uh, let's go into the primary node here on the primary data center. Mm -hmm. Let's go into clustering. Let's have a look. What do we see here? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Yeah, so you have to add the disks. Yes. So, oh, now we have to be careful, of course. Yeah. Uh, there are two uh, on cluster node yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, just uh, MPIO didn't get installed, I guess. Yeah, that was that's a mistake, of course. We should have MPIO installed. Uh, it's it's not enabled. You mean? Hmm. It, there was MPIO. I thought there was, but I'm not sure. No, there is. Uh, I saw the management of MPIO. But it's not configured. Yeah. Oh, it could be due to the fact that uh, it, 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 on, on node 2 it wasn't installed. Yeah. Could that be it? Could that be it? Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, yeah. I, for, I forgot about it because I wasn't going to run uh, Hyper-V, I said, and I should, have, I should have done it, of course. Silly me. Uh, let's just fix that. That's a little one. Uh, meanwhile, we can log in here as in the middle of the main account, okay. which is good. And whilst we are, well, just didn't like it very much. Uh, let's have a look at on the other two nodes, by the way, now. Uh, whilst this one is loading, we should be able to see here if we have the same issue. We shouldn't, normally. Because MPL was installed? I think so, yes. I think the only issue we had then was on that should, node. On yeah, we should only see two disks instead of four. There are really yes. no, only two disks because there are two fa paths to the disks. We see four of them. So uh, let's see if we do add this here. Oh, you see the same. Okay, we're not we're not doing well here. But how is the cluster built? You see cluster node one and cluster node three. So yes, it's three uh, yeah. on the three and one on the same uh, side, or is three no, and it's one on different one, sides? One, one, I'm only looking on, on at one node on each side. So one and two is in the primary data center. Yeah. The, hence the name PDC, and uh, if it's uh, if it's named. Uh, uh, DRC is the disaster recovery center, so, so that's so node 3 you, and 4. Maybe there is no problem. Please show the failover cluster again. Uh, node 1 sees two disks and node 3 sees two disks, so maybe this is right. Oh, yes, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. hang yeah. on. Uh, In the failover cluster manager, when you add the disks. Yep. There are I'm four. Just, I'm, I, I have MPIO, I think, so that yep. should be okay. Okay, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm, I'm good. good. 
Okay, then let's see. So, region. This all went well. So, what went wrong? It was over here. So, what did I try to do? I tried to get it to the right nodes. Yes. Let's let's see what we can we. You move the cluster group to assign it to the right node. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that look, looks nice. Only the last disk. So this is offline. It's not adding it to the CSV for some reason. The second disk on cluster node 3, right? Yeah, let's have a look. Make sure we're in the right cluster. Okay. You're on node one, well, so you sh you could add disk one and disk three, right? Um, look, disk one and disk three should be, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, let's have a eight. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, that's it. But basically, the script does normally is it adds them for us. Yeah. And uh, you'll you'll see the you'll see the disks offline because it's asymmetrical storage. Okay. But it also gives them a nice name so you can uh, keep them apart. That's basically what that script script part is supposed to do. Add the disk. Uh, what do we have now? Yeah, we can add them all. Doesn't really matter. They should be offline. Okay, so now depending on the size, and that's also a lot of scripting to find out the correct disk and the size. So this is the data disk actually, and this should be the log disk. So let's let's make sure that we have a nice name. So we'll call this PDC log. Log. Log, log would that, be nice, yeah. Yeah. And then we'll do this, and we'll call this... Uh, PDC data, right? Yeah. And what we can do is we can give these a name. Yeah. We'll, uh, of course, that's what normally we fill them over, we go to the other one because then we can see what size they are. Yeah. And then we can give the correct name to the correct disk because now this would be guessing. And guessing in this uh, situation is bad, you know. So we'll see. This is this. Uh, what which node am I looking at right now? Yeah. So I need to fill these over. These need to go to. Uh, sorry, I need to. Uh, I'll need to move them to the uh, to the other nodes in the cluster to mm -hmm. do that. I'll take the PowerShell for that. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So all the available storage, I'll move it to the node tree. So then those will be normally will uh, will come online. Oh, you pressed the wrong button. You pressed not uh, run the whole script. Please uh, stop oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That is not going to work, of course. So, that's... It was clearing the logs. That was the only thing it was, it was doing already. So, okay. that's not a big problem. Okay, it moved. So, we go back. Normally, we should now see... Uh, go away. We want the correct cluster. So, in tree. So, these disks are online now. That's it's the log, log disk. Yeah. So, let's call this one uh, DRC for Disaster Recovery Center, log, and then we'll call the other one 
DRC data, which is just for us to be able to see what is what, right? Right, there we go. Nice naming no. is a cool thing. Otherwise... Yeah. yeah, it's 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 kind of important. Yeah, it so is. So, what we want to do now is we're actually going to throw them back again to the node 1. Right? Mm -hmm. And what we'll do is on node 1 we will add the data one to the CSV. Right? We'll 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 add it to cluster shared volumes because yeah. basically that fits our scenario. This is for example if you want to do uh Hyper-V, uh, Hyper-V, yeah. Hyper Hyper replica you replicate your Hyper-V LAN, right? Yeah. Uh, or, or whatever that is running yeah. on that CSV. But you have so not that's... yet uh, enabled the synchronous replication. It is, it is, it should be done, oh. or? No, no, the synchronous replication is something we still need to do. Yeah, okay. So, from, basically, now we've only, we've only just, you know, uh, said, hey, look, we want, we want to do this. So, we take our data, uh, disk, and what we're going to say is we're going to enable replication. Mm -hmm. And if you've done all your pre pre prerequisites right, you have a source data disk and a target data disk, a source log disk and a target data disk, all of the same format, the same size, right? Uh, you can enable it, and the wizard should guide you through that. Mm -hmm. This is a bit more visual, so you got a, a wizard. So it says, hey, I need uh, a log, right? Yeah. A source log. So there basically... Is, you, there this, is one there, available. There's one. And this is where the name comes in handy. At least you can visually see. Okay, this is the one that I wanted to use. So I say, okay. So then you go one step further. And then you say, uh, to what data disk do you want to replicate your data? So that's, this is the, the, the target of the data volume. Mm -hmm. So yes, the DRC data, that's what I want to do. And then it says, yes, but I also need a destination log. Do you have one? Yes, we created one. So yes, we say... Uh, and then, is this a seeded disk or is this not a seeded disk? Uh, that this means, is the default. Yeah, it's still empty. Yeah, it it you, means you, uh, seeded would be you you already copied the data there, and he yes. will he will do a some differentiating this a diff, uh, some differentiating algorithm to to find the blocks he still has to replicate. So yeah, that's that's to avoid that you need to to wait two weeks for yeah. your entire volume to replicate yeah. over a pipeline if you do it asynchronously. Yeah. Basically if you if you do it within the data center and you have let's say dark fiber, uh, ten gigabits or better, you might not need to if your volumes aren't big enough. Yeah. But in certain scenarios this can be very handy. Yeah. So let's do next here. And then you have a nice overview. What what you what did you do? And this should be according to plan, right? So we do next. It's creating the re replication partnership. Uh, and now there should be interesting things happening on here. Look look at uh, look at the disks. Reserved. Uh, reserved is is a term you'll see in clustering, but uh, some things might happen to the disk. So let's uh, do a refresh. Is it finished yet? No, it's still working. So let's uh, wait wait a bit longer. Basically, what you need to realize is that the the only data you'll be able to see and use is the source. Yeah. Right. The log disks basically are not available to you. They're hidden. It's in the system volume uh, folder. Uh, you can go in there and try to look at it, but you know it's 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 unavailable to you. The only thing, the only thing you'll see is that it has a certain size, but that's it. Uh, so that's done. So let's go have a look here, again. Uh, you'll see something has happened. Uh, this is the log. This is the the primary data, and in your cluster, you see that we have. Windows volume replication, it's gotten a nice little grid 
Those are the two in the disaster recovery centers. So on the other side of the of the of the city or something or the campus, and these are the ones that are uh, being used. And this is funny. This one is in redirected access. So that's nice to know. And the owner node is uh, demo node one. Cool. So basically, uh, it's all very uh, uneventful because what we have now is a, C uh, a CSV disk. So we should see one here, volume one and two, right? Yeah. Uh, you can I'm put data even... in it. We can put some data in there, but basically, uh, do we have some data to put in there? Well, we'll just create a text file, right? There we go. Which is more than good enough, I think. I'm not really sure actually why we are seeing two. I only created one, uh, as far as I recall. One is the lock, one is the other. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the lock. It seems so because of the size. Yeah, but the problem is normally you should are not. not ex yeah, it should you, not you, be there. It's not a cluster shared volume, right? Uh, it created the cluster shared volume from it for you. Of the log, okay. Yeah, but, we, but normally you don't you don't get exposure to the log. Okay. So the fact that you're writing something in there is actually not something you should do. Okay. So I don't know if this if they'll blog this in in uh, the next versions or whatever. Normally you're not supposed to touch the log. Yeah. The log is for the replication mechanism, and in the in the uh, uh, the server to server you don't see you don't get much information. You can't get your hands in it. Just the size, basically, that's all you can see. Okay. Uh, so, now, how can what, we what, see the data that is this replicated? Can you well, uh, bring up the other disks, do a yes, failover we, or something we, like that? We, we're gonna we're gonna do a failover, and then we need to talk a bit because then it will have to do its magic. So, basically, if you look on the other side, what are we seeing here? Cluster storage, right? Uh, this is the log disk, okay. right, from the DRC. We're not going to touch it. These are the two volumes. Okay. There is data in there, but it's redirected mode. It's uh, we, we we really see the 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 PDC data. It's redirected. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's redirected. So, uh, what what the the thing to do now is just shut down the two servers and uh, the primary data center yeah which is basically going to cause the disaster recovery data center nodes to come to the conclusion that something has gone very very wrong and it will hopefully intervene and get us up and running again so right? please go on so so oh, we go to our host cluster and we are going to create a disaster. As you have seen from the issues we've had, I'm quite good at creating disasters. Yeah, and turn so, off, please. Don't shut down. <laughs> poof. So yes. they're gone. Yeah. And now, of course, uh, it's up to us to play the waiting game. So I would suggest that you talk and tell us interesting stuff. <laughs> While we so wait. how 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 long? Ah, look, oh. look 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 look! They all went offline. Yeah. Okay, so it's trying to to fail over and bring them up. So how long uh, how long normally uh, does it take? Uh, in the it, I, I've, I, I've done it a couple of times, and I've noticed that it's it takes anything between uh, three four minutes. Okay. Uh, it's, but it, you know, it's virtualization on virtualization, and it's uh, it's all over one gig, and all those pipelines are virtual uh, switches. You know, it's it's like this is absolutely, exactly one hundred percent the opposite of what you would do in production. Yeah. <laughs> it's all faked through virtualization, and it's on one gigabit, and it's, you know, it's something you you do not want to do. Yeah. But. So we'll play the waiting game a bit and chat a bit. It's only for, for the demonstration of the feature, and it's not yeah. quite finished. It's technical preview, and uh, 
I think it it will mature in the next uh, previews and up to the final product. But uh, it's amazing uh, that uh, it's uh, still uh, working. Uh, 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 look at that. Yeah, there is uh, one lock disk online. But it's the PDC lock, so it's not a yes. disaster recovery. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. No, 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 no. Think, think about it. Oh, think it's, about it's, it. it's uh, switching the the dependencies. So yes, now, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. So if you, if you if you look at on the hosts, you these two are shut off. Yeah. Right, and those disks, right, are not visible to to these. Okay. Yeah. So what which disks are these? Well, these are the ones you you expect to see. So, so you can show us, show us now in uh, in um, um, storage. Oh, I was a bit. I was a bit too too excited. Well, let's let's have let's have a look here. So we have two discs here reserved, uh -huh. right? And these are the ones that are active here now. Uh, and what do you see? It's it's cluster demo node four, right? So this wasn't even visible to to this node. So it's 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 done magic with the names, mm -hmm. but it's actually the replicated disks that have been taken into production. It's uh, a lock disk. Yeah, you need the yeah. other one. Here we go. Yeah, right. Uh, you so, could you could do a text file in the volume two, but it is a lock disk, and we don't see it there. So uh, it's a lock disk. So yeah. basically, the log now has been reversed. Uh, well, it has not been reversed. It's not being used. It, there's nothing in there. It's 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 only for the log files. It's not for replication, right? Yeah. Okay. It's just the log that's there. So that so what you put in there, it doesn't get replicated. So that was a bit of a silly thing to do, but it it, it proves a point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so. So this this is actually the part that always works. I, I've been able to to bring back up the other nodes, yeah. and then you see, and then after a while, and that takes a bit longer, you 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 sometimes see the original ones come back online. Mm -hmm. Now the entire scenario on how to how to uh, control the behavior is something you you ha really have to think about on beforehand. Yeah. Because let let's 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 say what we've done now is we've shut down two servers and you've seen the entire mechanism kick into action, bring the replicated disks uh, online. So hey, you're golden, right? Business business keeps rolling. You've just lost a data center in this scenario. Mm -hmm. But what if you just have a network outage? Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, your ISP from which you hire your line or your network team on the campus is doing some maintenance and you know over lunchtime they told you or at midnight uh, you know, we're just gonna have a 10 minute outage well 10 minutes from this demonstration seem to be more than long enough to have the failover kick in yeah perhaps you don't want that perhaps you want to be able to say hey wait a minute I'll decide if you fail over mm -hmm. I'll 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 decide I'll determine the time that this when this should kick in, uh, and perhaps also the reverse. Let's let's while we chat, let's do something. Let's just start these two. We might see something nice happen. I'm yeah. making no promises whatsoever. <laughs> Did but, we are already an hour and fifteen minutes in the demo. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe. Uh... Maybe you can cut out some of the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will do the whole, the whole uh, mile. <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 uh, it's starting. Uh, they're starting up. Yeah, but so, I, I believe yeah. you. They they it will take some time, and when it will. It will back. take some time, and it's not. You know, I'm not really 100 percent. Uh, up to speed with all the expected behavior. Is everything lit up? Uh, how can we control all this? There's all. There's still a lot of questions for me because the documentation is, is 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 rather limited, right? Yeah, DDA, so, it's and, and a it, technical preview. It's the first uh, available build of uh, Renext, and we have yes, still you, still it will be uh, here. ten it will months, be here. twelve months, one and a uh, half year to go. Yes, we we certainly do. This is 2016. Yeah. Right, so, but you, I think you got, you got the. Uh, I got the impression this this uh, will be a very nice feature, and so, uh, I did an interview with Net. I told you it will be available, 
I think soon. Uh, I have still to cut it, but uh, uh, he he told some nice things about uh, the storage replication, and he even draw a little bit on the on, on his uh, on his uh, board and uh, illustrate how it's work how it works. And uh, okay, I cool. think this was a nice showcase. Uh, uh, um, I think we should we should uh, finish it because uh, it was great to see all the things going wrong and uh, how you can help yourself. <laughs> yeah, this is real life. Uh, normally, we don't have the, this much errors, but this is a technical This is video. real lab work. <laughs> it's really lab this... work with the early version of Winex. So uh, I, I'm quite satisfied that, it's, that, we, that we, we got to the, to the goal, show the replication in a stretch cluster. And for some reason, uh, Node 2 is up and running. Okay. But in the cluster, for some reason, it's, it's not. say, I, I, I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> and, before, and before we call it a day, let's, let's just have a final look. You never know. You never yeah. know. You know it, it, it does some magic. Uh, uh, we, we could try to bring them online and see if that happen, uh, helps. Oh, it's joining finally. It's decided to join the party. Oh, look at this. It gets a vote. Did you see this? I love yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So see, we see the dynamic assignment of a vote and, and uh, taking it away in action. I kind of like this, but I'm nerdy that way. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, let's, 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 let's try this. Let's, let's bring them online. It's like, no way you're bringing me online. Of course not, <laughs> because it, it can't even see them. What we could do, of course, is uh, move the storage to the other side so that the correct node is owning it. So let's, let's play a bit. We, 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 we got a couple of more minutes, right? <laughs> really? We got it. We got it. Yeah, <laughs> we, we do. We do. Come on. Come okay, on. DJ, play. We got a couple of more minutes. Come on. Another five minutes, but then we have to... <laughs> <laughs> Finish it. That sounds very, very deterministic. Finish it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, I told you I have another appointment. Oh yes, I know. <laughs> what? Just just blame it on me. Uh, I do. I will do. Just that. just just <laughs> just tell just tell him. You look that guy. He was supposed to give a a lab with and a, and a demo without any problems, and he messed it all up, and I lost all this time. You know, you, you can just you know, it's. Uh, so what do you want to do? Do you want to move uh, the PDC data disk? Yeah. So move the crusted shared vault. Let's let's yeah, it's already assigned, of course. So let's move this one. There is. Uh, it's not gonna. It's not gonna do it, is it? No. Oh no, the name is wrong. I, I gave them another name. Remember, PDC data. Right. Yes, yes. I gave it another name. What is this one? At least this is the name. This is the name the script would have used. So, I was messing around too much uh, with uh, the issues we had. So yeah, 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 yeah. Something is happening. Look at it. Look at it. Yeah, it's online pending. It's trying. It's trying its best. It's trying its best. And cluster demo node one is owning the PDC data and PDC log. Yes. Oh, uh, it's it. It has moved, right? It has moved. Look at that. We are on one, and we can see the cluster storage. Ta -da. We should have written something in it. Yeah. We forgot. But hey, look. This is just playing around, trying to get a get a get a get a feeling with the product. Uh, I hope to to give uh, some presentations later this year, perhaps on this feature. Hopefully, with uh, the next uh, code drop in the previews, uh, when things are a bit, uh, I just say, more lit up, and I know a bit better what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. So, Denis, this was a nice last sentence for the recording. Uh, I think. We showed a lot. Uh, we we showed this feature, and uh, it it worked nice. The setup was a little bit uh, problematic because of yeah. uh, some PowerShell issues and uh, dropping out of the domain, and the password was not working, and so on. But uh, the final feature, the replication, and the bringing online of the disk was a failure. That that worked, and we even got them back. So I'm quite. Uh, 
satisfied with with the feature and uh, we have to remember it's a technical preview from october 20, 2014 we are yes, now in march we we are hoping for for new bits soon so uh, we'll see how it works in the next uh, technical preview or in the next okay. version Okay, Didier, uh, this was a nice one. Thank you very much. Uh, on Sunday, the 1st of March, we recorded this, and uh, I hope we will do another Hyper-V Amigo showcast soon. We will. Okay, bye, my friend. Bye-bye. <laughs>